This video was recorded on different days, so please don't sue me if I'm wearing different shirts. Well, hello there. As you can see, I've got my beautiful friend, my Apple EarPod microphone with me. Sorry about the wire that's getting in the way and my beautifully cut hair. And today, um, I guess I'm back with another video. And guess who's going to be the star of the show today? iOS 13. Got my, my microphone. So I recently realized that there were a lot of things in the iOS 13.0 beta that either got changed or just didn't make it into the final release. So in this video, I will be covering a few of those things, starting off with the number one. So it's obviously no surprise to you that the biggest feature of iOS 13 was yes, dark mode. And I honestly love dark mode. In fact, I use it on my main device all the time. No light mode accepted. But did you know that the dark mode toggle in the brightness section wasn't always called dark mode and the toggle being on or off? In beta 1, it was actually appearance dark or light. In beta 6, they changed it to appearance dark off or dark on and then we got to where we are now with dark mode on or dark mode off okay moving on to number two so we all know that in ios 13 apple moved away from this huge volume indicator blob sitting in the middle of your screen to this tiny little bar sitting right next to the volume buttons of your device now that's cool and all, but if you were beta testing iOS 13 beta 4, and I mean only iOS 13 beta 4, you would have known that the volume levels went from the regular 16 to a whopping 34. Sadly, they moved back to the regular 16 levels in beta 5 and onwards. And I would have loved to see this stay, but I'm not mad that it didn't as well because in control center with the little volume slider, you can adjust it to practically any volume you want. Moving on to number three. So when I was watching the Apple 2019 September event, I noticed something a little weird. When they showed iOS 13 on the iPhones and the iPads, the Apple TV icon was white and not blue, how I remember it. Turns out, it actually got changed to white in the final release. And can I rant over here for a little? Apple, I beg you change the Apple TV icon back to blue because it looked so much better that way. I mean, even on the Apple TV, when you would hover around the icon with the Siri remote, it would change the color a bit. And that was honestly quite satisfying to watch. So please change it back. It looks bland and plain in white. Okay, I'm done with my rant. Moving on to number four. So in iOS 13, Apple added time-synced lyrics to select Apple Music songs. And when you would invoke the lyrics to go on screen, a nice little gradient blurred background would appear on screen. And it looked really, really cool. But there's some people who download their music from a computer to their phone. And, you know, on-screen lyrics don't come with an MP3 file. So how would you be able to get the background on your song when it would be playing in the music app? Well, in the first few iOS 13 betas, the way to do this was you would go into the song, you would press on the lyrics button, it would show no lyrics available, and just keep the background. Yeah, 10 out of 10 editing and continuity. Unfortunately, Apple removed this in future betas and the lyrics icon was grayed out for whichever songs didn't have lyrics. So whenever you would tap on it, yeah, um, nothing would happen. But I'm so glad that Apple finally added the background to all songs in the music app. So um, let me just play this. I, oh. 
What? 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 Okay, you see this dock on my home screen? You see how the three icons are close together? Well, it may seem normal to you, but in the iOS 13.0 betas, it wasn't always this way. Let me do some photo editing in Photoshop to show you how it looked like. Okay, so basically, this is how it looked like. They did remove this in a later beta, leaving you with the compact icon arrangement that you're used to. Well, I guess that was it for this video, so thanks for watching, stay safe, wash your hands, take a shower, do whatever you need to do, please like and subscribe, and I will see you in the next one. Bye! For those of you who still stayed, moving on to number six. The trickster. So if you are using an iPhone 6S, 6S Plus, or first generation iPhone SE, then when you would go into a FaceTime call, you would see a little button called FaceTime Effects. Now that's all normal, right? Wrong. Because on the iOS 12 page on Apple's website, it says that group FaceTime is exclusive to the iPhone 7 or later but it was here on the SE and the 6S devices. So what happened when you would try out an effect? It actually worked! So there's no reason that it should be exclusive to the 7 or later. It should be available on all devices. Well, the feature got removed in a later beta because, you know, it's Apple. So that is actually it for this video. Thanks for watching. Please like and subscribe, and I will see you in the next one. For real this time. Bye. Scott, finally, I, I, I can let go of this stupid microphone that I have to that I have to pull up my armpit. God.